Hi, I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to assemble a Neutrik Speak-On cable connector. The reason I chose this particular connector for my do-it-yourself subwoofer project is because it's just a much more positive connection, and you just put it in there, you twist it on, and it's going to be staying there. Um, it's also easy to take off, but also there's no shorting cables accidentally if you're swapping out subs and you forget to turn your amplifier off or something like that or maybe you're watching a movie and one of your kids decides to climb back there and start messing around with cables but it's just a really safe connector style um, especially if you're dealing with thousands of watts of amplification it's all housed in this good conductor right here this it's all housed in this good connector right here and so it's just a really sturdy cable system and these conductors really aren't all that expensive these are about four dollars per connector but uh, for an application where you're dealing with really high powers really high currents I don't think you can really go wrong with something like this now the first thing we want to do when assembling this or any cable really is to make sure that we put these cover pieces onto the cable first. There's nothing worse than getting your connection perfect and then realizing that you forgot to put these on. So make sure you put them on first. Now we need to strip the wire. The nice thing about these connectors is that both on the bag and on the connector housing itself, there's a little guide that tells you exactly how much of the wire you need to be stripping in order to get it right. In the case of this wire, we need to cut one inch of the external seating and half an inch of the internal wires. Now I'm going to measure the inch down which I need to cut off and you really want to just lightly score this outer seating otherwise you might end up doing what I just did on the prior take and nick the insulation on the inner wires and well it may be okay if you're really going for the highest quality connection you can make you really don't want to do that so it's, it'd be better to have to score twice rather than score once score too deeply and have to cut off the end of your cable just have to work it a little bit and there it's starting to come off You can just go in real gently here. And maybe not pull so gently. See, I didn't score that much at all. There we go. Okay, and there's the inner wires. Make sure I didn't cut the connectors this time. And there's a slight nick there, but I'm just going to call that good. Ideally, you don't want that. I didn't nick it too terribly bad. There's this internal strain relief. We're just going to cut this off. And now we have our two interconductors. And this cable, by the way, is 12 gauge cable. This is actually some, uh, this is actually Carroll cable, which I got from Parts Express. Okay, so now we strip these two internal conductors here. And these are really, these are crummy wire strippers, but they're the ones that I have, so I just have to kind of go with what I got here. Hopefully it's not going to leave too much of the 
inner sheathing behind and it left it all behind. Fortunately that stuff's fairly thin so it's easy to get off with your fingernail. What you really don't want to do is nick the internal cables here. Now you don't want to have extra ones flying off like these little copper bits like I did on a previous attempt. Ideally you don't want to nick or cut any of the internal cables because that's just degrading your connection there. Give that a little twist to tighten it up. This might help if you have fingernails which I don't have very long fingernails. Just let me see if I can here we go. I'm not scraping too deeply on here, just enough to try to get this internal plasticky stuff off. it along with the twist. Now as far as the color code goes, if you're making your own cables, just try to be consistent. Well, don't try to be consistent, be consistent from connector to connector. So since I was kind of taught on DC electronics, I'm just going to make my black my negative and the white's going to be positive but for your particular application make sure you double check uh, what the pinouts need to be because there's the one plus one minus two plus two minus uh, for these cables i'm wiring up from one plus to one minus if you're doing a bridged mono you go from one plus to two plus so make sure you double check your pinouts on these but this one i'm going from one plus to one minus and on here, it's really hard to see, but it does show on the housing and next to each screw where your actual pinout is. And here's a close-up to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've already backed these screws out, so I'm just going to stick my cable in there. I'm doing my white to my one plus and my black. 21 minus and just try to line these up because you want to get all your conductors inside these sleeves here. Okay, and that's in there pretty good. And this connector takes a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the screws down. And you don't want to super torque them because you don't want to strip the screws out internally on the connector. Okay. Now we put the strain relief on. And for the first part, this has little notches. This has little notches right here and here, and it lines up inside the connector here. So you just want to try and line those up, and that will prevent it from spinning. Then you just simply get your outer shell on there. And there's your connector. If you do decide that you need to remove the cable housing because you need to change the wiring, maybe you're going with a different amplification like from a stereo setup to a bridged mono setup, I found the best thing is to just get an adjustable wrench and put it onto the housing there and it will help it to come off because it's really harder to get off than it is to put on. And also another thing I'll show you is that the strain relief here 
has left some pretty good indentations in the cable here so it's really a nice and robust connection uh, you'll probably be able to trip over this cable and not yank the cable out of the connector I'd, I'd be more worried about the uh, the other side of the connector getting ripped out of your speaker housing perhaps so really a nice robust connection and some pretty good strain relief too now final thing we need to do is we want to test the connection we made and I have another connection already on this cable and we're just going to take a ohm meter here and make sure I got the continuity right so I'll go from so I'll go from one plus to one plus and that's good and I'll also make sure that I'm not shorting to any of the other wires which I'm not and then one minus to one minus and make sure that's not shorting okay and I have a good cable and so there you have it how to assemble a Neutrik speak on cable so thanks for watching hope this helps